little there. Hi. It's cold in here, isn't it? How are you? What's your name? You must be in the cabin next to me. They seem to be sitting all as singles together. <laughs> um, yeah. I see, I see. Oh, where did you get on at? Southampton. Oh. I got on at Belfast. Yes. Are you staying on all the way to the U.S.? New York. Amazing. Me too. Well then we'll be seeing a lot more of each other, won't we? I'm not terribly good with boats, I'm not gonna lie, so I do apologize if I'm a little bit fidgety. I just get a little bit nervous. Nothing to be worried about, but you know, with the, the sinking of the Titanic and all, it's just made me a little bit more, I don't know, on it. And there's other reasons as well, you know. But I think we're here at dinner for, I don't know, I think they said about an hour, maybe half an hour, I don't know. Yes. Well, there's bread and stuff on the tables for both of us, I have yourself. I know I do find it strange we're not allowed to leave the dining room until I was like, what if you want to go to the toilet, you know? There must be something going on, though. I mean, I know there is something going on. Nothing to worry about, though. I'll maybe tell you about that later. Anyway, <laughs> I do talk a lot. I'm sorry if it annoys you. Oh, you don't mind? Oh, do I? Oh, it's the Northern Irish accent. It's a little bit of a sing song. Everybody always tells me that I sound like I'm singing a song while I'm talking, you know. <laughs> well, I did bring a little basket in my bag. It's got some things in it so that I wouldn't be bored because I had a feeling we'd be locked in here for a little while. So, I'm not really meant to. I'll maybe wait until it, the people around us start talking again. It's a little bit too quiet in here. And I'll tell you what I know. In the meantime, though, why don't you tell me? Why are you heading to the US? What's in New York for you? I see. A oh, wonderful. It'd be so nice to have family over there. I'm going to be an actress, I think, is my intended cover story. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I'm, oh, I might as well be honest, I'm heading over to the US to do some training with some top detectives. It allows me to come back to Northern Ireland and work with their secret services. It's like a new thing. It's like better than just your normal like detectives and your normal police constables. I'll be helping making a difference over Northern Ireland and I'll work undercover so nobody is gonna suspect somebody like me looking like this, you know? But I may have to do assignments. They may send me away other places. But if I'm good enough, I'll get a good recommendation. So I don't know how long I'm over for it until the course finishes. I have to train off of very intelligent individuals. I'm a little bit nervous for that. Um, I need to be taught how to use a weapon. I've never seen a weapon before, you know? Well, I have seen it a couple of countries. Nothing spectacular. I've never used one. So we'll see how I get on. 
yes, women are allowed to join this branch mainly because, you know, the spy aspect of it, so it's a new adventure. I know a few other lassies that are heading out as well, so well, do get yourself comfortable. I think we will be in here for a while. No. hear me if I say I'll lead on to more about it in a minute but unfortunately there has been a little incident aboard the boat it happened just after we left Southampton it's involving another lady and a gentleman from Northern Ireland we're not sure what happened, but I think there's been a murder. And that means since we've not stopped since that there is a murderer aboard the boat. But I don't know for a certain. I'm just deducing this at the minute. And I think that's why we've been locked in the dining room. But I'm not to draw any any alarm. I did ask the stewardess, but she said she didn't know. And I wasn't to be going around saying my theories to other guests. And if I was caught going around saying my theories to other guests, I would be in trouble. So, keep that to yourself, will you? But I'll go on and I'll explain a little bit more about my suspicions. I've been writing notes. Anyway. with me my tea leaves to put in my tea just because the stuff that you get on the boats and things like that is not as good and actually my little granny she gives me these she likes to forage and pick over in Northern Ireland and you, all of this is really safe and you just pop it in your tea okay This here is chamomile, and chamomile is a beautiful flower, and its dried leaves make an excellent cup of tea because it makes you a little bit sleepy and a little bit more calm, and I think being calm is really good in the situations like this. I think we could all easily get ourselves a little bit worked up, you know? So I would recommend that to start with. Um, I'll show you. I have another one as well that I think we'll have to put in your tea. I did tell you about the murder, so 
Take from that what you wish. There for you. Okay. Oh, I'm losing. I'm losing my little. My little fur. I did come wrapped up because I did have a feeling we'd be in here for a while. And I wanted to bring with me something that I could just go to sleep in if I needed to. Are so tired, you know. I did bring some special bombs with me as well. I'm just going to. Might as well brush my hair for bed, you know. Bring this down for a minute. So, tell me, do you have a family back home or you on your own? And how long will you stay in the U.S. for? I see. Well, you never know if my course takes as long as yours or you're visiting. Maybe we'll be on the same boat back. Did you pick one of the single rooms as well? I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I know. Now that that lady has moved, I was a little bit suspicious of that lady that was sitting next to us. I, the plump lady, well, she kept looking at me funny and she was trying to hear you again to our conversation. Probably because you're obviously a very handsome gentleman. But, you know. <laughs> However, I think she, um, I don't know. There was more to that. So, I'll tell you what I know. So, yesterday when we talked and said that and everything was normal. Absolutely normal. And after we left Southampton, I was heading down to my cabin, which is on the sixth floor below deck, I think. Below deck. Six. I don't even know. It's quite near the bottom of the boat. All the single rooms are. Oh yeah, you're on the same level. Okay. So, I was heading down, and as I was going down the stairs, I could hear a little bit of commotion on the fourth floor. And I saw this unruly gentleman with this huge bag of mustache and a top hat going for a bit of a run, you know, and I thought, that's awfully strange. What's this, what's this fellow running for? So, the next thing was, I peered around the door, thinking, I want to know what's going on here, you know? So I thought to myself, right, I better hover, and I better not make myself known in case there is a big problem, you know? So, I'm just making my own business, being a wee bit nosy, <laughs> and I thought I would peer around, you know, it's like training from a spy course. And there... On the floor was a man and a lady. Now I've seen the two of them because I saw them get on the boat. And I did think they were acting awfully pompous. You know, they seemed to have been from money and they came on in Northern Ireland. They were very well to do and they had people running around for them all the time. You know, the stewardesses, they were making them feel as small as, as a pea. That sort of thing. They were being really cheeky. They were being really disrespectful. And they were being very demanding. I understand they booked one of the top suites. So I don't know why they were on level four. Anyway, the two of them were lying. Both splayed out of this room door. And they were lying. As if they were sleeping. As if they'd have too much to drink. You know what I'm saying? They were just a little bit like... I don't know, sleeping, because both of them had their arms stretched out, and in each hand or nearby was a cup of tea, what looked like a cup of tea. Now, at that point, I saw quite a few stewards and stewardesses come all the way down, and they were shouting, close off, stay in your rooms, because people were trying to open their room doors and all that. 
So then I saw the boat dog tar come down. But he, at this point, I think they knew there was something in the stairwell, so they did keep glancing my way. But I kept myself quite, you know, far back. Um, and I heard him say, Nope, there, nothing could be done for them. So at that point, somebody came through my stairwell and said that I shouldn't be there. So I left at that point. But basically, what I deduced from it was that the two. Those two pompous two that had gone on from Northern Ireland had obviously, I mean, it's so obvious to anybody who saw, they'd obviously been given poison. Mm. And it killed them. Now, I was trying to have a think back to yesterday night's dinner because there was a little bit of a commotion with them and another guest, which wasn't the man that had seen running stash. So at this point in time, you know, it could be him. He was near the scene of the crime. But there's reason to believe that they pissed off a lot of the stewards and stewardesses. So, you know, it could be any other one of them. There was reasons for multiple people on this boat to murder this couple. I'll tell you that now. I even remember going into the shop Hey, there's a wee, you don't see it. There's a wee shop. Hi, on the first level. Oh, she's lovely in there. Mrs. Potter Smith. Lovely wee lady. She sells lots of little things that maybe you forgot to bring with you on board. So you've got stuff to brush your teeth or maybe some nice face cleansers. So you've got some makeup in there. So I was very pleased with that. Because I'd forgotten my powder. And you can't be going to dinner without powder, so... Uh, so, anyway, I understand that she had a bit of a run-in with them as well. I understand that they tried to throw back, because I think they got something from her. I'm not sure exactly what. It was the lady along the floor told me. Um, apparently they bought something they weren't happy with. It was like, maybe it was a powder for her. I'm not sure. She wouldn't refund them. So I think their behaviour was terrible. And she, I don't think she was from money. I think he was maybe from money. And she definitely wasn't because she was trying to act as if she had manners and all that and was brought up well, but she wasn't. She had not a single manner at all. She'd have seen the way that she was drinking the wine. It was honestly awful. Anyway, so. multiple people that are going to potentially be brought in for questioning. Now, I believe we're locked in here because this happened not long ago. So I think we're probably locked in here while they do some detective work. I, I know that a little boat came with a detective in it to get aboard the ship. So I reckon that's what We'll look at the crime scene and they don't want anybody about the boat. I think that's why we're all locked in here. But I don't know for sure. I don't know. Could be anything. Could be anything. Right. Oh. The only thing is I feel like we might end up sleeping in here. The only thing I can think of though is that we might end up sleeping in here. And you're looking awfully tired, my darling. Well, actually I do My little granny gave me this as well, so this is a dream, dream, dream oil complexion. And what you do is you put a little bit on your face or your, your hands, like a syringe, your pulse points on your wrist. You put it there. Okay. So I could put a, a couple of little oil drops on you. I promise it's not poison. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh about made me a little bit more hesitant in what I'm drinking and eating. So I've been smelling it first and dipping my finger in it to make sure it doesn't feel very acid because I feel like poison would maybe be quite acidic and it would feel a little bit like itchy. So I've been like, you know, sniffing and prodding. 
to make sure. I mean, I don't know why anyone would want to kill me, but I'm, you know, training to be a secret spy, so maybe they would. Who knows? Hopefully there's not another murder. Okay, let me just... Then hopefully we'll get out and get to our beds, but if not, just rest your sleepy eyes and on the little chair there. Okay. I'm so tired as well, you know. This one's called a portrait. Hello there, Amelia. Somebody said near me man who had been pointed out as I had been wishing for a long time to meet this Don Juan. He was no longer young. His grey hair looked a little like those fur bonnets worn by certain northern peoples, and his long beard, which fell down over his chest, had also somewhat the appearance of fur. He was talking to a lady leaning toward her, speaking in a low voice, and looking at her with an expression full of respect and tenderness. I knew his life, or at least as much as well as known of it. He had loved many sadly several times, and there had been certain tragedies with which his name had been connected. When I spoke to women who were the loudest in his praise and asked them whence came this power, they always answered after a while, I don't know. He has a certain charm about him. He was certainly not handsome. He had none of the elegance that we ascribe to conquerors of fem feminine eyes. I wondered what might be his hidden charm. Was it mental? I had never heard of a clever scene of his. In his glance, perhaps? Or in his voice? The voices of some beings have a certain irresistible attraction almost suggesting the flavour of things good to eat. One is hungry for them, and the sound of their words penetrates us like a dainty morsel. A friend was passing. I asked him, Do you know Monsieur Amelia? Yes. Introduce us. A minute later we were shaking hands and talking in the doorway. What he said was correct, agreeable to hear. It contained no irritable thought. The voice was sweet, soft, caress, and musical, but I'd heard others much more attractive, much more moving. One listened to him with pleasure, just as one would look at a pretty little brook. No tension of the mind was necessary in order to follow. No hidden meaning. 
in an aroused curiosity and no expectation of old interest. His conversation was rather restful, but it did not awaken in one either a desire to answer, to contradict or to approve, and it was as easy to answer him as it was to listen to him. The response came to the lips of his own accord as soon as he had finished talking, and phrases turned toward him as if he had naturally aroused him. One thought soon struck me. I had known him for a quarter of an hour, and it seems as if he was already one of my old friends, that I'd known all about him for a long time. His face, his gestures, his voice, his ideas. Suddenly, after a few minutes of conversation, he seemed already to be installed in my intimacy. All constraint disappeared between us, and had he so desired, I might have confided in him as one confides only in old friends. Certainly there was some mystery about him. Those barriers that are closed between most people that are lowered with time when sympathy, similar tastes, equal intellectual culture, and constant intercourse remove constraint. Those barriers seemed not to exist between him and me, and no doubt this was the case between him and all the people, both men and women, whom fate threw in his path. After half an hour we parted, promising to see each other often. He gave me his address after inviting me to take lunch with him in two days. I forgot whatever he stated, and I arrived too soon. He was not yet home. A correct, silent domestic showed me into a beautiful, quiet, softly lighted parlour. I felt comfortable there, at home. How often I had noticed the influence of apartments on the character and on the mind. There is some which make on the character, which some make one feel foolish, and others, on the contrary, one always feels lively. Some make us sad, although well lighted and decorated light-coloured furniture, and others cheer us up although hung with sombre material. Our eye, like our heart, has its likes and dislikes, of which it does not inform us, and which it secretly opposes on our temperament. The harmony of furniture walls, the style of an ensemble, act immediately on our mental state, just as the air from the woods, the sea or the mountains, modifies our physical nature. I sat down on a cushion-covered divan and felt myself suddenly carried and supported by these little silk bags of feathers, as if the outline of my body had been marked out beforehand on this couch. Then I looked about. There was nothing striking about the room. Everywhere were beautiful and modest things, simple and rare furniture, oriental curtains which did not seem to come from a department store from the interior of a hour, and exactly opposite me hung the portrait of Owen. It was a portrait of a medium size, showing the head and the upper part of the body, and the hands which were holding a book. She was young, bareheaded, ribbons were woven in her hair. She was smiling sadly. Was it because she was bareheaded? Was it because merely her natural expression? I have never seen a portrait of a lady which seemed so much in place as one in that dwelling. Of all those I knew, I've seen nothing like that one. All those I know are on exhibition, whether the lady be dressed in her gorgeous gown, with an attractive headdress, and a look which shows that she is posted first of all, before the artist, and then before those who look at her, or whether they have taken Some are standing majestically in all their beauty, which is not at all in the natural to them in life. All of them have something, a flower, a jewel, a crease in the dress, or a curve of the lip, which one feels to have been placed there that is not entirely natural. Why? One cannot say without knowing them, but the effect is there. They seem to be calling somewhere on people whom they wish to please and whom they wish to appear at their best advantage, and they have studied their attitudes, sometimes modest and sometimes haughty. What could one say about this one? She was at home and alone. Yes, she was alone, 
For she was smiling as one smiles when thinking in solitude of something sad or sweet. And not as one who smiles when being watched. She seemed so much alone and so much at home and she made the whole apartment absolutely seem empty. She alone lived in it, felt it, gave it life. Many people might come in and converse, laugh, even sing. She would still be alone with her solitary smile and she alone would give it life with her pictured gaze. That look was so unique, it directly fell on me, fixed and crazy without seeing me. All portraits know that they are being watched and they answer with their eyes, which see, think, follow us without leaving us from the very moment we enter the apartment they inhabit. This one did not see me, it saw nothing, although its look was fixed directly on me. I remember the surprising verse of Baudelaire, and your eyes, attractive as those of a portrait. They did indeed attract me in an irresistible manner. Those painted eyes which had left or which, perhaps, were still living, threw over me a strange, powerful spell. Oh, what an infinite and tender charm, like a passing breeze, like a dying sunset of lilac rose and blue, a little sad, like the approaching night, which comes behind the somber frame and out of those impenetrable eyes. Those eyes created by a few strokes from a brush, hide behind them the mystery of that which seems to be and which does not exist, which can appear in the eyes of a woman, which can make love blossom within us. The door opened and Mr. Millial entered. He excused himself for being late. I excused myself for being ahead of time. Then I said, might I ask you who is this lady? He answered, that is my mother. She died very young. And then I understood whence came the inexplicable attraction of this band. And with that, I can see you're already falling asleep. So I'll leave you to get some peace now. I'm just gonna look at the sea out the window. And if you need it.